I saw uh, Dave Chappelle's uh, set on SNL last weekend, and I was a little disappointed. I was um, expecting another self-important, self-aggrandizing lecture from the Jordan Peterson of stand-up comedy Dave Chappelle. But instead of his typical pretentious proselytizing, uh, we got jokes for a change. One of them I liked. It was about Car- Kyrie Irving. Um, I won't repeat it because I'm not a millionaire like Dave, so TOS applies to me. Um, but I will repeat a statement he made in the set, and I have to emphasize that word statement because people keep saying jokes when they defend him. And I'm not talking about jokes. I'm talking about the statements in between the jokes. Like this. I know the Jewish People have been through some terrible things all over the world, but you can't blame that on black Americans. As we all know, no one does that. That's not a real thing that happens, ever. But he said it because he's incoherent, and the audience knew he was incoherent. They didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. He got dead silence, except for one person who applauded, and I think even that person who applauded didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. But Dave... These days, especially, cannot help himself. He can't get through a single set without at least once trying to tell it like it ain't. But here's John Stewart, in for the rescue once again. Defending bigots, again. And specifically, uh, he's on the Colbert Report. And you know what? It sounds like it almost sounds like he's defending anti-Semitism. Sure. Absolutely. So what do you imagine a response is to something? If people perceive anti-Semitism in someone's in, well, into all, what Kyrie Irving posts right. or uh, what Kanye says or what Dave said on Saturday night, what do you think a, a good response well, first would of all, be? I think just reflexively naming things anti-Semitism is as reductive as some of the things that they might be saying. It immediately shuts down a conversation. I, I... Well, you know, calling somebody an anti-Semite might immediately shut down the conversation. But you know what shuts down the conversation even more? Anti-Semitism. And why do you think that is, John? Is it because we as a society agreed a long time ago that bigotry is a little counterproductive? And we... Pro- progress past that and through a variety of means wean ourselves off of it because let's face it can't go around shooting people at stoplights because you don't like their haircut we got shit to do if he doesn't think anti-semitism exists he should go try and talk to one of his newer fans See, me and John Stewart, we go way back. Dave Chappelle. But unfortunately, Dave's new Faustian bargain is he's got a whole new fan base to buy those tickets. They're very similar to Joe Rogan fans. And boy, are they a barrel of laughs. And smart, too. One of them, well, I got into an argument with one of them. And let's just say, um, that conversation did shut down. I dug deep into him. And at a certain point, you hit a brick wall. And that brick wall um, usually involves some of the facts in and around uh, Germany in World War II. Let's, but uh, let's, uh, let's go on. Let's continue. Well, I, I would say that people thing. said that they perceived uh, a... a uh, a promulgation of even if, if with a comedic intention. Col- Colbert, um, Colbert is babbling there. What he's trying to say is that when we saw the set on SNL, we got some anti-Semitic vibes, kind of similar to the last special he did. But people didn't really cover the the Jewish part um, of the set of that uh, special because uh, they got distracted by the fact that he declared himself a turf. Jen promulgation of anti-Semitic tropes. That doesn't mean the person is an anti-Semite. Comedy is is reductive. And I think part of what it is is we play with tropes because everyone has prejudice in their lives and, and in the way that they view things. And comics rely on those prejudices as a shorthand for our material. Even the wokest of comics 
plays with tropes to a certain extent. Yep, I can. I guess I'm pretty woke, and uh, I definitely play with tropes, misogyny, race, all that stuff. Tomorrow night, I think I might be doing um, something about Sidney Poitier eating pussy. Sidney Poitier. I first of all I have to learn how to pronounce his name. But here's the thing: they will know that I'm joking. They will know underneath it a sense of irony. And they will definitely know that I'm joking because at no point during that set will I stop and say, oh, but seriously, folks, um, I really hate these people. Dave Chappelle did that. He literally said, I want to exclude these people from society in the middle of his set of his last special. And the next day, Jon Stewart denied that that even happened. Dave Chappelle could get up on stage and announce that he despises Pop-Tarts. All kinds of Pop-Tarts, from uh, strawberry to s'mores. But I can guarantee the next day, Jon Stewart and all of his friends, Joe Rogan, all these people, will sit around going, I wonder how Dave feels about Pop-Tarts. But my point is, the most interesting thing to come out of this, in my mind, was something Kanye said on his uh, on his tour that he was doing after he said that, and then he got interviewed by five, you know, different people. Now he just said, and now he just said that accusing somebody of anti-Semitism is the same thing as silencing him. But he did f- interviews with five different people. Because the media model is arson and conflict. Uh, And now he's blaming the media for Kanye's situation. The media tricked Kanye into talking about uh, Hitler and stuff. Praising Hitler. Even though TMZ, he did it to the TMZ studios, and TMZ buried that tape for over a year. We still haven't seen it. Um, okay. He said something fascinating in no, my he mind. He said, hurt people hurt people. Oh, did he read that on a bumper? Hurt people hurt people. I don't give a fucking shit if some millionaire is hurt. Because his wife left him? This motherfucker is spending his life trying to hurt me. He literally got a guy, tried to get a guy elected by running for president and in an attempt to help get a fascist elected to president so that he could take away our social security, our health care. He already took away abortion. This dude wants to hurt people because his wife left him? Dude, she ain't even hot. He goes around talking talking about her like she's Hillary Duff or something. She's meh. And if the point of all this is then to heal people, the only way to heal a wound is to open it up and cleanse it. And that stings. That hurts. But you have to expose it to air. And I'm afraid that the general tenor of conversation in this country is cover it up, bury it, put it to the outskirts, and don't deal with it. And what I would say is, you know, look at it from a a black... He literally just said the exact same opposite thing a couple minutes ago. He just said... He just said that we can't call people anti-Semitic. We can't call out anti-Semitism when we see it, when we hear it, when we read it. We can't call it out. That's what he just said. Now all of a sudden, we're the ones trying to bury it? We're the ones trying to push it away? We're the ones that are afraid to confront it? Mm, This motherfucker. Who's afraid to confront it? Let me tell you something. This guy got up on a podcast and started talking about how J.K. Rowling might be anti-Semitic. How the Harry Potter books might be anti-Semitic. 
because of the goblin bankers. Now, this is not his take. He stole this take from Pete Davidson, who stole it from Cumtown. Well, I guess nobody stole it from anybody because it's true. He knows it. He said it. The next day, the next day, Newsweek simply reported what he said. John Stewart is implying that Harry Potter is anti-Semitic. He had a panic attack and freaked out and denied that he ever said that. It's on a podcast. It's on a recording. You can get it. You know what else I think? This is what I think what's happening. He's denying that Kanye is anti-Semitic. He's denying that Dave Chappelle is anti-Semitic. He denied that J.K. Rowling is anti-Semitic. I'm starting to think that anti-Semites secretly control the entertainment industry. 